Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 from a USB stick onto a bare bones install on the PC behind me. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at installing Windows 11 on a bare bones installation. Now, currently in the PC behind me, we've got a Ryzen 5 3600 running on a MSI motherboard, which is a relatively modern one. It is the MSI B550 Gaming Plus. And the rest of the system, it's got an RX 2060 graphics card and 16 gigs of RAM. Pretty much a uh, kind of bog standard affair, nothing too complicated there. And I think it represents what most people probably use these days. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the Windows 11 installation. Now, obviously the ISO is technically leaked and it is kind of copyright infringement, etc., etc. But for uh, dev purposes and for kind of getting used to the operating system, see what's new, see what's changed and see if it's any good, then I think this is fair use. Now, there will be links in the video description below. So if you want links to actually where you can get the ISO from, there is another video, which is uh, something which I've watched personally, which one of our Discord members pointed out to us. So the link for that will be in the video description. Also as well, there will be a link in there on how to actually get that ISO onto a USB stick using the Rufus software. I'm not gonna go into it in great depth in this particular video. If you wanna find out how to do it, it's all been done a million times before. So do check out those videos. And then when you're ready, you can come back and watch the installation. But this is gonna be some of those things that you might wanna watch first. There are a couple of gotchas when you're trying to install from the dev ISO one of which is really it's designed to be used in a virtual machine. So if you're doing this on a virtual machine, absolutely fine, just use the ISO, install it, and you're off to the races. If you're trying to do a bare metal installation or onto a regular piece of PC hardware as a direct install, then there's a couple of gotchas, one of which is the Windows file actually has protection in it, so it can't be installed on bare bones. But it's a very simple thing to get around. All we need to do is to enable the trusted platform module on your motherboard. So Windows 11, as it stands at the moment in this dev version, does require TPM 2.0 or higher. So you will need to enable that in the BIOS, which is one of the first things we're gonna show you how to do, and then we'll go into the installation. So what I'll do now is I'll try installing this from Rufus onto the PC without TPM installed, so you can see what you're likely to experience. Then we'll change it to TPM 2.0, then we'll go through the full installation process and then we'll uh, take a closer look at Windows 11. So, let's get into it. So when you're booting up, first of all, uh, use whichever keys you need for boot override. I think it's F10 or F11 on MSI boards. Uh, yours may be slightly different. So we come up with the select the boot device. Now, because of the way this is set up, it's on the Kingston Data Traveler Partition 1 UEFI. So we'll go ahead and press that. And then this should start the Windows installation. Obviously, try and do this on a blank drive. If you don't, then it will erase any data which is on your existing drive. Luckily, I've got a couple of uh, SSDs, so I put one to one side and use it for this particular instance. So first of all, we've got the language to install. So the only option here is the United States on this version. So what you want to do, depending obviously where you are, is to scroll down through and make sure you've got the, uh, the appropriate language. So we're going to look for English United Kingdom. Should be in here somewhere. There we are, United Kingdom. So hit next. And then we've got the option to install now. So now we'll say set up is starting, pretty much what we're used to seeing on Windows 10. And you've got the choice here to put a key in if you want to. I'm not going to on this because I've actually done a full install. So I'm gonna say I don't have a product key. And then it asks you which version. So we're going for Windows 11 Professional. There are a ton of versions actually available. So, uh, but we'll go with Standard Pro and then you'll get this message. This PC can't run Windows 11, so it basically doesn't meet the minimum requirements. is isn't a hardware thing as such, like processor or RAM or anything like that. So yeah, not really a great deal we can do here. So are you sure you want to quit? Yes, we are. So what we want to do now is click on repair your computer, and then we'll go to troubleshoot, and then we'll go to UFEI firmware settings. So restart into UEFI, click restart, and this will take us back into our system BIOS. If you haven't got this option, you can just close down the PC, restart, and just mash the delete key or whichever key is appropriate for your particular system. So here we are, this is the MSI ClickBOS 5 on our motherboard. So what we wanna do is go into settings, and in, our, in somewhere on your board, look for boot settings, that kind of stuff, and look in security. So in security, 
We've got the option for trusted computing. This is the one we want to look for. Go to trusted computing. Currently, it'll be disabled. That is the default setting. And all we need to do is click on enable. And that is it. Then you can close the BIOS and reboot the PC. So I'm going to click on the cross up there. Save configuration and exit. Yep, so security device support enabled. Click yes, and we'll wait for the reboot. Again, mash the F11 or F10 key or whichever is your boot override key so you can select your USB boot drive. So we're gonna do the same again. Click on partition one, and we'll start going into the installation process once again. So again, exactly the same deal. So look for your uh, your language, English United Kingdom, install now. And this is where you'll get a little bit further. So now it'll go into analyzing the drives and checking them out after you've done the I don't have product key thing. Choose Windows 11 Pro. And there we go. Immediately we're different. So you've got a uh, licensing agreement, etc. Not much choice but to accept it. You've got the option here for upgrade or custom. So we'll do custom, and then what we're going to do is to delete all the partitions that are on the drive as it stands. Obviously, this will erase any data, so make sure that the drive that you're deleting is fine. So there we go, we've got a roughly 500 gigs of space. So now we can click on next, and it'll basically go through and do the installation. So what I'll do is I'll probably fast forward through uh, a large chunk of this, and then we'll come back when we're uh, we're getting ready. Okay, so the first screen you'll get is this one. So this is the uh, the region setup. So we'll choose United Kingdom. And then you get the option to add more keyboards. So we want to have the uh, United Kingdom and find the one that's appropriate to you. Uh, do you want to add a second? You can if you want to, obviously, but we're going to skip that. Next, it'll check for updates. There is actually an update already for this. When you go into Windows 11 for the first time after this, it will actually try and install even more updates, even though it is scanning for them on the initial setup. So then you get the option for how would you like to set up for work or school or for personal use. So we'll choose personal use because this is just for testing purposes. And then you can choose to add your Microsoft account if you want to, or you can sign in with your Microsoft security key, all those kinds of things. Or if you want to click on sign in options and you can have a offline account, which is uh, yeah, in some cases much better. Well, for this particular instance it is anyway. So it warns you that you're obviously going to have a limited experience, but that's fine. We'll go with a limited experience. And who's going to use this device? So we'll just call this Mub Test. And then a strong password. So we'll leave that blank. And this is where you want to use your discretion for things like Find My Device and Diagnostics, all that kind of stuff. Usual thing which we see on Windows 10 just in a slightly different format. It does look quite clean, quite smooth. I, I do actually quite like the look of this. It's got very much a kind of Android-esque appearance to it, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think. So here we go through the usual thing, getting things ready. This may take a few minutes, and generally it will do. So again, we'll probably fast forward through this to uh, save you the pain. And there we have it. There is our Windows 11 desktop in its glory. Actually, I like this new clean look. Um, personally, I like the uh, the bright or lighter settings. I know obviously you can choose dark mode if you wanted to, but I actually quite like this. So as you can see, some of these sections here still loading. And that is because Windows is still doing its thing in the background, very much like it did with the live tiles when Windows 10 first came out, so after your first install, a lot of the stuff here will be blanked out. So anyway, this is the, uh, the kind of like the search section. So let's have a quick tour. So over top left, we've got Recycle Bin, new icon, Microsoft Edge, default browser. Down in the left, obviously we don't have a start bar anymore. 
with the Cortana button, all that kind of stuff, it is now centralized into this middle area. Moving across to the far right hand side, we've got the usual things. So we've got time, date, clock, etc., taskbar icons, anything which is running. Uh, right click, you can choose the usual thing, adjust tone, date, all that kind of stuff. And also we've got our notifications, which you can use in the same way as you would normally. I generally set mine to focus assist and alarms only, so, so as not to be disturbed. Time and date's looking okay. Um, the time actually is wrong. It's not 5.57, so I'm not too sure why it's uh, doing that. Anyway, so in the center, we've got the Microsoft Store. So you click on that, it opens up the store as per usual. Actually, it's pretty snappy as well. The apps do seem to work a little bit quicker. And if we do a search, uh, let's maybe try Cinebench. So Cinebench is there. Again, all very nice and quick, very snappy, as you'd expect from a fresh installation. Then we've got our Edge browser. So the first time you open it up, it'll do the usual things. So it'll set up your accounts, all that kind of usual stuff. So I'll leave that doing its thing. Also, we've got the File Explorer. So File Explorer has changed a little bit, not a great deal. Mostly it's a uh, cosmetic upgrade. So we've got new icons for desktop, downloads, documents, pictures, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, usual deal there. If we go into view, and we'll change that so we can change it so it opens a little bit more normally. So I normally have it so it opens in this PC, so I'll click apply. And yeah, there you go, full screen. So yeah, it looks a little bit, a little bit more clean. The top section is essentially the same, the ribbon bar at the top there. We've got very similar features, nothing uh, a great deal going on here. This PC, yeah, it looks just nice and clean. Very, very reminiscent of Android, I've got to say. And the new Windows logo here for the C drive is a little bit different. And also we can do things like map network drives. So let's, uh, let's go into the network and you get the uh, thing saying network discovery is turned off as we normally would get. So we'll turn on network discovery and we'll say we're on a private network. And it's all really snappy, it all works really well. So it's picked up our TARDIS, which is our storage device on the network, which is our Synology NAS. So we can uh, browse that. First of all, it'll ask you for your credentials. So let's go ahead and type that in. And there we go, it's picked up our things. So now we can do things like map drives, all that kind of stuff. So let's map a drive, nice and easy. It's all in the right click. So map a drive, this is our old content. So we'll just call that drive letter O. And there we go. It's just really, really nice, really snappy. And you can go through the setup of the edge get out of the way because it was annoying me. So yeah, there's the uh, the new file icons. Looks pretty decent, I quite like it. Nice and clear, nice and crisp, slightly bigger. This goes towards the kind of the unified Windows version, so it looks and feels at home on either touch devices or for desktop PCs and potentially even phones, I guess, at some point. So that is the, uh, the Explorer, again, not really Massive changes, but it feels snappier. You've got the widgets box, which uh, currently won't work because you need to be signed in with a Microsoft account. I think widgets is one of these things that people probably dislike anyway. Next up, we've got the task view. So you can click on there and you've got various things, basically it's Windows browser. And also you can create new virtual desktops, which is something else which has been improved in this particular version. Next up, we've got search. So you can type for things in there. So let's try old. Detect order displays, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, essentially web searches, all that kind of stuff, which we'd normally have seen from the search bar in Windows 10. And we've got the start bar itself. So in the start bar, now this is populated. So you've got the option for seeing the kind of pinned items there, which is your quick access kind of thing. So edge, mail, calendar, etc. store photo settings, all that usual kind of stuff. And if you want to, you can click on all apps and then you can scroll through as you would have done previously. Now, if you actually do register this or put in a Windows license key, which there is actually a link to in the video description. Or of course, if you want to, you could help one of our uh, sponsors, which is premiumcdkeys.com. The link's in the video description. Pick yourself a cheap Windows 10 key, which will activate this particular version of Windows 11, the dev version. So I know that because I've tried it already. 
So anyway, all your apps are in there. Very nice. If you right click, you've got the option for apps and features, power options, event viewer, device manager, network connections, disk management, computer management. As we go to computer management, you see it's all very, all very similar. And you've got things like the PowerShell. What you might notice as well is the taskbar at the bottom there actually expands to fill the width when you open up a, a new program. So we open up uh, Task Manager. You can see it's basically re-centralizing that. Uh, one thing which isn't here, which um, is a little bit of a shame, is the, the computer information. So you've got disk management, all that kind of stuff. I don't think there's any real changes in disk management. All looks very similar. Yeah, shrink volumes, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to find out what's actually in your computer, you can have to go through and search and type in about. And you can choose about your PC. And there we go, we've got our desktop, Ryzen 5, etc. Windows 11 Pro, dev version, etc, etc. So yeah, usual stuff, what we expect to see. And uh, we go back to the settings, you've got the usual stuff here, so updates, there'll be updates straight away, they're updating this like crazy, so we'll have a quick check, yep, there we go, straight away, things to do. Now obviously I would uh, expect if you've done this for yourself, first thing you want to do is head over to the device driver manufacturers for your motherboard, etc, install your AMD chipset drivers, if you're on an Intel board, obviously Intel chipset drivers. Graphics drivers seem to be installed already. We've got the NVIDIA control panel, so it seems to have installed the kind of default driver. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could update that. But overall, I kind of like it. It looks very nice. I like the file management system. This is all looking very uh, clean and pretty. Easy to view, easy to use. And just in general, it does feel actually pretty snappy. And I've tried a few other apps, things like MSI Center, that works fine. Uh, Cinebench installs from the store, etc. Seems that most things actually work. So this is uh, this could spiral out of control to all different types of things. See so settings, Windows update, and all that kind of stuff, delivery optimization. A lot of this stuff is all very similar. There's not any real massive changes, but hopefully when they actually announce it, we'll find out a lot more about what is gonna be going on under the hood, if there's gonna be any new features or whether or not this is actually the finalized version. But I'll be carrying on using this for a while, see how it goes, and I'll be doing some regular updates. For those of you that are interested, you can actually shift all of your taskbar icons to the right-hand side or left-hand side. I think it's just the left actually at the moment, but there's someone did say that the right is gonna happen as well, but you need to have the Windows installation activated for you to enable that to happen. So uh, currently we're leaving that centralized. But anyway, that's gonna wrap this one up. This has been how to uh, install the new Windows 11 ISO onto a bare bones installation without having to do any crazy stuff with the WIM folders or the Windows installation folders. Literally turn on TPM 2.0 and uh, yeah, you can enjoy Windows 11 experience for yourselves. So there we go. There is Windows 11 installed on a bare bones installation and it actually runs really well. It seems to be extremely smooth. Uh, I did do a quick Cinebench run to compare against what my previous installation was on Windows 10 and I've got around about 100 to 150 points more. So it does seem a little bit more responsive in general. Maybe it's because there's less things running in the background. They haven't kind of fully bloated the system out yet, but I guess we'll find out in due course. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you want to see more content like this on a regular basis, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the chime icon, and you'll hopefully be notified of future video releases. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll see you in Windows 12. Thanks for watching.